Hello, fellow leggers. Well, it's lovely for you to join us if you're new around here. It's nice to meet you. If you're back once more, welcome. Welcome, we, welcome. We're at a theatre we haven't been at before. Yes, the, the lands we've traversed like Frodo in Lord of the Rings just to get here. To this unknown <laughs> place. Apparently North London. Because <laughs> we're at the Arcola tonight to see a revival, a sort of return of D.H. Lawrence's The Daughter-in-Law, which had a sold out run last year and is three time Offie nominated. Just a to find out our thoughts, how many stars, and whether it's break a leg or leg it. So yeah, the Arcola Theatre, um, we love coming to new venues and yeah. checking out new spaces, seeing the vibrant theatre that is out there in the UK, and boy is there some good stuff, so hopefully this lives up to that name as well? Well, I hope so, because I like visiting new venues that are off West End. I tend to find they're full of gems. You don't know they're there, and then suddenly this whole theatrical world opens up before you in the most unexpected of places. But it's also hit and miss. Yes. Right. I mean, don't play it down. Let's <laughs> see what this is going to Sometimes happen. it is really good. What do you know about the sort of it's, it's not. Um, uh, Lawrence, what's yeah, his name? Yeah, D.H. Lawrence, probably that most one. famous for writing Lady Shatley's Lover. Okay. This play was written in 1913, but it wasn't performed for years and years it and years. It was unstaged until 1967 and hasn't okay. had a London production in 15 years. Now it's set in the Nottingshire miners' strikes of 1912 as Mrs Gascoigne discovers an explosive secret about her newly married son which threatens the security of her daughter-in-law, Minnie. Oh, the drama. The drama. It's, it'll be one of those stories, though. It's set in 1912, but it'll be like a tale as old as time that's always family drama. I love drama. And no matter if it was 1912 or 2012, the themes will be the same, won't they? Hopefully. I'm sure they will. <laughs> playing the, ro playing the role of Minnie is Ellie Nunn. Now, Ellie is daughter of Sir Trevor Nunn and actress Ooh. Imogen Stubbs. Okay. Previously, she did Shakespeare in Love at the Noel Coward in 2014. We loved that production. Fantastic. Um, it was absolutely stunning. Uh, also, Matt Biddulph is returning to the role of Joe Gascoigne. It's directed by Jack Gamble, who's associate director here at the Arcola. It's staged in the round. Exciting. Yes, and it's two hours and 20 minutes, including the interval. So we'll have an interview. An interview. Oh, bloody yeah, will we? <laughs> we'll have an interval. We meet, so it? stick around for our 30 second interval breakdown thoughts. Until the end to find out how many stars. So we're at the interval and we've not been asphyxiated, um, regardless it's very of, blue. of how we look. We are rather <laughs> smurf esque. But it must be time for the Breaker Leggers 30, 30 second, second interval, interval breakdown. breakdown. Go, oh, what do you think so far? Um, I like it. It's, it's a very good dramatical piece. Um, limited characters, but boy is the drama immense. Um, some really strong performances. The cast is very strong. Um, yeah, how about you? I really like it. I think it's ahead of its time. I mean, I'm looking forward to talking to you more about it at the end. But so far, so good. Again, well-defined female characters. So, so rare even in writing now, never mind from 1912. I can't wait to see where this goes next. Long first half. Let's See what We've come to the end of The Daughter-in-Law at the Arcola, our first time at Arcola Virgins. So what did you think of your getting your Arcola it's cherry a, it's a really like It's a really nice venue. Mm. It's got a really nice feel to it, a mm. lovely bar, um, very rustic. It's almost like the downstairs of the Royal Court, you know, where it's like just a hub of activity. Mm. It's, it's a really nice area as well. Vibrant I can tell it's and alive. Nice. There's so many bikes, so many yeah. people cycling around on bikes. So it's a really nice area. It is. I, I really like the theatre, the theatrical space, uh, personally. What did you think of The Daughter-in-Law? I really liked it. It's a bit of a slow burner. I think it took a, a good 20 minutes to get into it. But then it, I, I must compare it to Ibsen, um, similar kind of times, I guess. But um, just a handful of characters but the way the plot develops and these intricate relationships and these real strong characters, like the characters are written so strong. They have such a driving force that is slowly picked and unpeeled as you go through and it affects what they do. Um, a really good insight into human beings. Yeah, and I think that's what it is. I mean, going in there, I hoped that one of these family table dramas, it was going to be relatable, you know, it's going to find something 
very narrow about it and you know a lot of these themes that are explored in this of a woman's place in a marriage and a, you know a son's loyalty towards his mother compared to his wife and how those relationships can, can be very complicated are things that we still see today I mean soap operas are built around it you know it's, yeah and, you know some of the best family. episodes of, East of EastEnders exactly it's all about family and nothing's and changed mother. since 1812 um, and you know what I'm very surprised and I'm admiring DH's Lawrence's work as a writer of strong women characters in a time where I don't think it was commonplace I mean correct me if I'm wrong but the women really are the heart of this story and the men are much very much the back seat. They're weak. Yeah. They, they are weak. Saying they are women absolute, rule the world. Yeah, absolutely weak, which is inspiring. And then the women are complicated, but ultimately a strong woman is is the heart of society. And, mm. and that's that's basically what the piece is about. And they're about. the ones calling the shots. And I think when money's brought into play in this piece, that changes the dynamic, maybe switches it up a gear even further, because we're acknowledging that women have got the power. But when you give the women the money as well, because traditionally these, these relationships drive on the fact that the man is the breadwinner so he always has that little extra bit of keeping home but not in this piece it's the opposite, it's the opposite. and I think that adds to a really interesting dynamic yeah and there is a really nice thing to play in terms of money what does money mean to one person um, or to one kind of class and then what it means to somebody else uh, and that is a real driving force of emotion in this really nice touch you have to remind yourself that one pound back then it was actually worked 78 English pounds so a hundred pounds was nearly eight thousand pounds yeah which, which is a, puts it into a bit of context. massive amount of context and you have to sort of remind yourself something else you have to remind yourself is that we're in Nottinghamshire and I don't envy the actors having to grasp that dialect they have shown skills that I see in, in, in some of the best Shakespearean actors of the time in grasping an entirely different language almost how did you yeah. find settling into that I, th I thought the um, the dialect was great I, I don't know who the dialect coach was but this isn't in um, easy language I, from what I understand looking at the programme, the text is actually written phonetically mm -hmm. as well, so that's hard to be able to then translate from the phonetics into saying it. Yeah, but they the did it so seriously. Word. Like, you don't understand everything. No, you, you don't. <laughs> you probably understand about half of it, but it's so driven and, and done in such a way that you get what they're saying. And I think that's the, that's the director's um, probable input in this is, do you know what, guys? We've got to really sell this and we've got to push the story on and we can't rely on speaking those lines we've got to be those lines and I I, I really admire what the director has done I here. mean we see some shows and sometimes what stands out is the accents but mm. always for the wrong reasons yeah this was for the right reason considering the accents are so strong it was so slick and so seamless like so Jack, down. Jack Gamble as director in um, in cahoots. <laughs> That's not the right word, is it? In um, cahoots. <laughs> yeah, in cahoots with Penny Dyer as the voice and dialect coach. Um, so she's Penny does fantastic. a lot of stuff for the National Follies, Red Barn, This House. Top um, of her another, game. Yeah, honestly. And girl from the North Country as well. Yeah, but really, she's the one you want, I think. I, I think have a dialect. I, I think if, if we were to pick out an award for someone who's doing a good job, a leg award. Do you want to put a break a leg nomination here for dialect? Man, this is going to be our first nomination for yeah. our 2019 break a leg Dyer award. As voice and dialect coach, we nominate you um, as a nominee for an upcoming break a leg award. So we're going to round all these up at the end of the year, and um, hopefully. Um, you know, we'll have enough to make a category out of because <laughs> I don't mean, know what It's not something we talk about in. often, but it's hey, not. we'll worry about that coming We'll worry the about that, yeah, later. But absolutely fantastic. Let's in talk terms about of the individual performers now because there's only, what, five of them? So I think we've got time to scoot through them all. The strong mum gets it all. Yeah, let's let's come to her last then. But Matthew Barker as Luther Gascoigne, sort of the downtrodden, slightly lazy, really out, doesn't know what he wants with his life. Wet, he's a bit of a wet lettuce, really. He is, he's under the thumb of this big domineering character, which is his mum. Yeah. And so he, he does it, he just does what he's told. Played he by is, Matthew Barker. Yeah, yeah, I thought he played that really well. Oh. And that frustration that then also bursts out at the same time, just trying to find his place in life. Teresa Bell Briggs as Mrs. Purdy, the interfering, well, there's a, I don't want to give too much away about the plot here, but she is integral because 
but she is an interfering woman. I she mean, was she great. is the she is the very definition of a fishwife, really. She's so, and she just wants was. to know everyone's business. Yeah, in terms of what she brought, she just was. You in such safe hands. Again, her accent was so good. Mm, really I, awesome. I didn't understand half of what she said. There, a lovely monologue, mm. and I just enjoyed listening to it and the sound she was making. I didn't know half really of what it was. Really savouring those words. But yeah, and the sound, the guttural sound she was making sometimes was so of that character. Um, like I could see it as a real person that was that character. Brilliant. Matthew Biddulph as Joe Gascoigne. Um, I really liked him. Joe with the broken arm. Yeah, he I, he was in. Re I felt in real safe hands with him. He was really confident in the role. I loved him. as great. Very believable. And also, I yeah, saw a certain flair of him during the bows, which I thought this isn't his typical character. I think there's a lot. I think he's a lot more flamboyant than this character gives him sort of credit for. Oh, really? But he was fully thoroughly believable. <laughs> it was just the way that he bowed. He had this sort of little flourish, and I was like, oh hello. We didn't see that in your um, acting today. We didn't see that in your character. Owning the bow with a flourish. That's how you should bow with a flourish. Ellie Nunn as Minnie Gascoigne. I mean, we, we have mentioned who her parents are, and I'm sure she wants to step out of their shadow. But that's not always not easy, is it, to no. be in the shadow? I think she holds her own. Yeah. And what what a part, man. She's. I think she's in it the most. She's got a lot of text in there. Yeah. Some she, real strong dramatic scenes. She was a surprise. I've got to say, going in the, to the interval, I wasn't sold, but I think that's because the text doesn't didn't for me at that point give her enough give her enough sort of um, of a, of a, what's of a the journey. word? Yeah, of, of a journey an or of an art. Of a narrative. That's the word I'm looking for. Okay. It didn't give her those opportunities to step out of that. I found her character in the first act and her characterization a little bit one dimensional, but boy, did she change my mind in act two. Um, she's got some deep stuff. I mean, talk about drama in this piece. The drama in this is pretty immense. Mm -hmm. There are some spiky moments that even I was like, <gasps> Yeah. Ah, did you get that? Yeah, I did. I, I was, was like, oh, where's this going? I didn't see and that I, coming. Yeah, that was the thing. I didn't see it coming. And no. it kept me guessing. And I think that's what I loved about that writing, D.H. Lawrence's writing, is it that is. I thought we were going in one trajectory, but we didn't go there because it would have been too obvious. Too obvious. almost as if he roll, rolled the dice. Yeah. I was like, oh, Where'd I didn't see that going. No. Okay, let's take in this yeah. direction. Yeah, it really does. And you feel that as an audience member. You know, you can sense that. I think that was really interesting. And last but not least, that's Veronica Roberts as the that domineering mother, Mrs. Gascoigne. She was great. She was bloody Absolutely. good. In uh, her I mean, physicality. No surprise her that accent. Uh, that she's experienced, but bloody hell is she good? And I'm sure she works and works and works and works because, I, you, do you know what? I could see her in. Uh, there's a lot of roles I could see her in actually. I'm not going to say. She's probably done them. Say any? Yeah, she probably has she's probably done, done them. them. I, I feel I felt really um, privileged to be in this space because the Iconic Theatre in itself is, is very small and very intimate. And it's in the round, so you're naturally drawn into the middle and into the stage. Yeah. So you, and you're right on top. You're you're like you are observing the, these performances and this narrative and seeing it unfold. It's and hers in hers in particular, just stunning and, and and beautiful and nuanced and layered. And you think her priorities are one thing, and she acts one way and then you think there's a little bit of a Machiavellian sort of she's in it for her own means things and the way that she changed the characterization I thought was a, was, was sensational. Some really good writing, yeah. and really well performed. Yeah, and that's it. The, what is good writing without a good performer? And boy, she understands that text. Let's round it up. Um, we talked about the director as well because yeah. we often forget about the no, director. We did. So we well done, director. Well done, Jack. Phew, we got that one out of the way. <laughs> yes, let's wrap it up. For the daughter-in-law currently playing at the Arcola in North London, North London. We are going to give... Four! Four stars for this piece. Really worth a look in a really surprising... Um, you know, I, I didn't have any expectations going into this. You know, I'd heard it was good last time round, but you try good and ignore standards. that. Yeah, yeah and, you know, and well, theatre is so subjective, so yeah. come along yourselves and, and, you know, make your own mind up. But I would highly recommend this one, and I don't think you're going to get an experience like this. You wouldn't get it in a main house. You wouldn't get it in a big cross arch. It needs no, to be in this sort of environment. So, so take advantage it. of that. Yeah, it's a really good, strong piece that mm. twists and turns, that really evolves and opens up um, with some really solid, strong performances. But that's just what we think. Just what I think. What do you just what he think? Thinks. We want to know what you think. So let us know down below. Have you ever seen anything here at the Arcola? Have you seen this? Did you catch it last time? Yep. We'd love to hear from you. We're the Breaker Leggers. And we'll catch you again soon. Bye. Bye.